So my objective is to give you to an overview uh, of uh, uh, this new technology called 4D CT system and provided by Toshiba, but dedicated in this case for liver interventional oncology. And uh, the objective for me is to give you data on the reasons why I did choose this technology in my department, to give you data on the setup, data on economic data about how to find the solution to pay for such technology. And obviously we will review uh, the main functions, main features of uh, this uh, system. And then we'll go to clinical cases, but not only to see clinical cases because you are, you are all interventional radiologists, but to see, because it's more important, the workflow, for example, how we go from the NGO to the CT in clinical practice, because there's yes, some things that, that you, can, you can usually see only when visiting centers. And I must uh, recognize that I have only a small experience with this uh, system because we started only one month ago, but maybe it's interesting to see what we can do uh, after only several weeks with this technology. So, my disclosures. And first, I would like to give you a small background on my department. My department is located in Montpellier. Montpellier is a well-known city in the south of France. And my hospital is a big hospital, 2,000 and 700 beds, 11,000 employees, and as you can see, the annual budget is nearly 1 billion euros. And actually, this hospital is divided into four different hospitals located in the same area. Each of them, we mainly dedicated on specific diseases. And for example, my hospital, saint Eloi, is mainly focused on digestive diseases. And the last point will be for the Faculty of Medicine, which in Montpellier is the oldest one of all the European world. Uh, in my department, my staff is five doctors, including me. Uh, uh, three additional ones will join me by the end of this year. Six residents, 29 radiographers. And again, we are mainly focused on digestive diseases, especially with more than 80% of our cases in diagnostic uh, imaging dedicated to digestive diseases and all our cases uh, in interventional radiology. As you can see, 1,000 liver biopsies each year, 1,100 uh, therapeutic interventions for the liver, and 120 patients treated by liver ablation uh, or this activity on one interventional suite located in the operating room, and that's an important point. So we'll come back to this point later. So first question, what is an NGO city? It is very easy. It is an NGO, it is an NGO suite combined with a CT scan. Very easy. And if you look at the history of this system, you have to go back to 1992 to see the first NGO city system imagined by Professor Arai, who we all know from Tokyo, Japan. And obviously, with time, this technology evolved. And for example, in 1999, uh, the city country was moving on rails, as you can see here. And the, the, the sea arm had a multi-axis technology at this date. And from 2000, many evolutions, essentially on the CT scan, 4 row, 16 row, 64, and the famous 640 slice CT in 2013. And uh, this technology obviously was essentially for Asian countries, mainly in Japan. And in 2015, Toshiba decided to launch this system uh, outside Japan. What this system is looking like today, so the 4D CT is composed of a ceiling suspended sea arm with a multi-axis technology and a large flat panel detector and many tools for dose reduction. We will review them. This, due to this uh, multi-axis technology, the flexibility is really high. We can see that the rotation uh, it can be done up to 270 degrees, and you have uh, automatic synchronization of the detector and the collimator. This is interesting because you can cover the whole patient from the lower to the upper extremities uh, without moving the patient. And this 40 CT system is obviously composed of, by a, a CT scan. If you are lucky, you have the best one, the Akino One technology, well known from Toshiba, 640 slice CT with a large bore, 78 centimeters, very important point for interventional radiology. And this CT scan obviously uh, has iterative reconstruction algorithm. 
And the most important thing, in my opinion, is its wide spatial coverage, 16 centimeters covered in only one rotation, which uh, is very interesting for us, either for imaging, but also for uh, uh, interventions. And this is the final result. You can see so the 40 CT system. In one room, you have the CT scan, the CHARM. You have just to add a US machine, and you have every imaging modalities in the same room. You can do everything. Some data about the number of uh, such systems uh, worldwide. You can see that most of them, it's not surprising, are located in Japan, but some others in Korea, in France, in the US, or in Canada. And if we focus on the Aquino 1 technology, only seven uh, systems in Japan, two in Korea, one in France in my department, and two additional ones by the end of this year, and one in the US. Some words about the setup. This is a map of uh, my interventional uh, room. So uh, remember, I am inside the operating room, so it means around. We have, you have whole surgical rooms with surgeons uh, working, uh, especially for liver transplantation. And I was lucky because my room is the largest one. But as you can see, 50 square meters. And you have the examination room, the control room, and the machine room. And this is the final project design uh, provided by Toshiba. And to have the, the good idea of the movements of the table, of the city country, of the sea arm, they provided us with a video simulation. That's very important because the room is not so large. And as you can see, the objective is to check if the table is able to move, is able to rotate. If the gantry is able to move and to cover all the region we want to uh, image. As you can see, the C-arm is in parking position. That's something interesting. If you want to only use CT scan for diagnosis, you can, or for interventions. And the C-arm can go to the working position and can be far from the city or very close to the city. So that was OK in this case. And we launched the construction work, huge work. Eight months were necessary to install this uh, room. Why? Maybe three explanations. The first one is the system is not is a little bit more complex than a classical and suite. First reason, but it's not the, the most important one. We are inside the operating room with surgeons around working. And as you know, if you make noise, surgeons are not really happy. So you have to stop working. That's one important thing. The other thing is the problems with air treatment, because you have to be sure that we have no contamination of uh, the air in over uh, surgical rooms before starting any work, and this takes a long time. But the result is nice. And this is uh, my room, and some pictures to, see, to show you the movements of the, C, of the CT scan, of the table. Uh, the CT scan can tilt. Uh, the C arm can be very close to the CT gantry. An overview because of the flexibility on the C arm, another point of view, and another picture taken from the control room. Some data about uh, healthcare economics, because it is a very important point. And maybe if it could be helpful for you if you're interested by this technology. Uh, maybe you can find some interesting information to find how to found the difference or to, how to, find, to justify the cost for your director. And to, to explain, I, I will tell you the full story, but very quickly, the full story in my department. So just to really understand, this is a map again. My department is in orange here, so I have a CT scan, an MR machine, US machines located here. And as you can see, the, the, the operating room with the interventional suite is located uh, far from my department here. I wanted to develop complex liver ablation procedure, but to do that, you need a CT scan. And the only CT scan available at this stage was the CT scan located in my department. So I wanted to use this CT scan theoretically dedicated for diagnosis to do interventions, and it worked. And it was a success because I had a long, 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 and long waiting list. But to do that, uh, there are several drawbacks, very important drawbacks. The first point is, this is a CT scan dedicated for diagnosis. And I used it half a day each week to treat the patients. And during this time, my hospital is losing money because uh, with diagnostic imaging, my hospital is 
earning more money than with interventions. This is the first problem. Second problem uh, is uh, the problem of anesthesiology resources. They are clearly not optimized. Why? Because, as you can see, the OR with anesthesiologists is far from my department. So to do this activity, I had to, to, to have with me one anesthesiologist and one nurse. And in this activity, the anesthesiologist was only dedicated to my practice. And as you know, in the OR, the anesthesiologist works in two rooms at the same time. So clearly, this is not an optimization of anesthesiology resources, again, not profitable for my hospital. And the last point is probably the most important. I could not increase my recruitment. I had a very long waiting list. Some patients had to wait two months to be treated by ablation. It's not acceptable. And the problem, I could not increase this activity because I, I had no time and because of the two previous reasons. So I had to find a solution, and the solution, I imagine, was to buy an angiocity and to put this angiocity in the operating room to have an anesthesiologist with me and to be able to practice ablations every day when I want. And doing that, I had to build a business model, obviously. That's also our job, unfortunately. And by increasing my activity of liver ablation, and it was very easy to do that because of long waiting lists, the business model was positive. So buying an angiocity uh, and uh, putting the angiocity in the OR is beneficial for the patient, obviously, but also beneficial for the hospital in, in, my, uh, in this case. So to summarize, uh, in my department, for this city, uh, in the OR, spares anesthesiology resources, so it means that this is profitable for the hospital. For this city, allows an increase of diagnostic CT scan because uh, the free, of the free time uh, on the CT scan for diagnosis, again profitable. And for this city, allows an increase of higher activity, again profitable. But more generally, if you look at the activity in interventional suites, either sit, interventional CT scan or NGO suites, usually this occupation time is not really optimized. I think that if we combine in the same room two imaging modalities, we will be able to improve the cost effectiveness of the equipment. It means by, by increasing the occupation time. That's something you can explain to your director. Now we go to dose reduction tools because it is a very important point. Because with such technology, you can do very complex procedures. And usually, when the procedure becomes more complex, you increase the dose you deliver to the patient, but also to you and your staff. And it is absolutely a must to have great dose reduction tools in such cases. For example, the magnification. When you use angio, you have to magnify your image very, very often. And when you use conventional magnification, you have to reduce the fov. And when you reduce the fov, you strongly increase the dose. For example, when you come from 30 centimeter fov to 20 centimeter fov, the dose is increased by 45%. With the live zoom technique, you digitally enlarge these images in real time without increasing the dose. It is something like a numerical zoom. So, for example, here you have no increase in the dose and the same magnification uh, uh, and the same, uh, nearly the same image quality. I, I will give you an example. It's very easy to, to, to activate this function. Conventional view, just a button, live zoom. Very efficient, look at the image quality, very good. So we spare the dose by using this technique. And to be honest, this feature, I use it every day because it is very easy. Second point, collimation. As you know, collimation is one of the most efficient techniques to save the dose for the patient, but also to reduce the scatter radiation that hits both the patient and you and your staff. But collimation has many, many drawbacks. Uh, usually collimation is only symmetric. Centric. It means that if the array of interest is not centered in the image, the collimation is usually not optimized or you need to move the table. First point. Second point, uh, you lose information. It means that when you, you use collimation, you have a black screen and you lose the background, you lose your landmarks uh, and, uh, around the, 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 the array of interest. And the last point is the visual comfort because when you look, when you use conventional uh, collimation, Usually, you have a very small image and a large black screen around. And for the visual comfort, it's just awful. With this technology, spot fluoroscopy, very interesting to use it. Uh, you activate the window. 
you move, can modify very easily uh, the window uh, size, and then you can move the window where you want and define the, the array of collimation, and then when you activate fluoroscopy, the fluoroscopy is activated only inside the window, and you keep the background around, you keep your landmarks, and for the visual comfort, it is much, much better. Obviously, you save the dose as well. Last example of uh, dose reduction tool, dose tracking system. Dose tracking system is a system allowing real-time estimation of patient skin dose. Look at these figures, peak skin dose, fourth peak skin dose, and peak skin dose rate. Very interesting, but during the procedure, you have no time to look at these figures. And interestingly, uh, this uh, technique, DTS, uh, provides a color-coded skin dose distribution. So it's very easy to see during the procedure that you are uh, burning uh, the skin, and you can modify the angulation of the C-arm. You can better manage the radiation exposure and modify this angulation to minimize and to limit the risk of skin injury. Again, very useful tool, very visual. Now some uh, overview of, uh, of the interventional tools. Obviously, you have a CT scan, so you will use CT fluoroscopy. But there are two modes of CT fluoroscopy. The first one is a classical one. I would say the 2D fluoroscopy. Uh, as you can see here, this is an example of a patient with uh, HCC nodule at the dome of the liver. I uh, wanted to ablate, but the lung was uh, uh, on the path of the needle. So first I inserted a various needle in the pores space to inject CO2. And the classical CT fluoroscopy, uh, you have three images. You have your reference image here, three images. And you can modify, obviously, the slice thickness. You can modify the window. You can pan the image. You can do everything. Uh, but it is a classical mode. Something that's interesting, uh, those reduction tools are integrated uh, with uh, iterative reconstruction. But because of the large spatial coverage, you can also use the 3D fluoroscopy. And in this case, we have no, no slight snakeness anymore. You have the axial, the coronal, and the sagittal view at the same time. And even uh, 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 an oblique plane you can define when you want just by clicking the pedal. So it's also a very interesting mode, especially when the needle is positioned to be sure that it is well positioned. Very basic tool, but I was impressed by the, 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 the precision of the measurements. So you have an example of a TIPS procedure here with a calibrated uh, a catheter uh, with markers. As you know, between markers, we have one centimeter. Let's look at the result in terms of measurement without any calibration. And our, okay, small experience, each time we measured something, the, the, the precision was really high. I was really impressed by, by that. Or a classical uh, techniques, 2D word mapping, very easy to take a fluoroscopic image, to take a, a DSA image and to use it for 2D word mapping. Okay, it's very, very classical, but very efficient. More interestingly, the 3D road mapping, remember you have a CT scan, so as you will see further, uh, the image quality of the vessels is really high, and because of the permanent communication between the NGO and the CT system, you can send everything from the CT to the NGO, for example, any volume you segmented before, and in this example, you can obviously modify the color, you can modify the transparency, and you have in real time both uh, the 3D road mapping and the classical fluoroscopy. So uh, again, this is a tool that I use every day. I will give you some, many examples uh, of that. More advanced tool, uh, the right flow, also uh, uh, known as color-coded circulation. Uh, this technique allows to better identify the feeding arteries of maybe of tumors, for example, but also the feeding arteries of arteriovenous shunts, which sometimes is very interesting in the liver. You can also evaluate the flow. And this could have some very interesting applications uh, for radioembolization. Uh, this is an example of a patient referred in emergency after Whipple resection for pancreatic cancer. You can see here uh, hemorrhage with a false aneurysm co coming from a small branch arising from the supermesenteric artery. And look at uh, this uh, video. Uh, you have uh, a color evaluation of the flow. Doesn't work. Okay, a color evaluation of the flow. You can see that the false aneurysm is fulfilled but slowly, and it helped me to, to find the, 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 the very small artery uh, responsible for the hemorrhage. 
It was a difficult procedure. We used a very small microcatheter to catheterize this small artery, and we injected glue. And at the end, we could control that all the feeding, all the vessels coming from the super mesenteric artery were still patent. And you can also evaluate uh, the enhancement of the small bowel to confirm that you, have, you had no uh, glue migration in this case. Very interesting technique we can explore in the following month. Now the first patient. This is important because, uh, as explained at the beginning, we have only one month experience. We did this patient exactly one month ago. It was a patient with a HCC, uh, in a solitary HCC, uh, in a patient with cirrhosis, and uh, we had a history of uh, right hemipatectomy, and the objective was to perform a deptase. First, we started by a 2D DSC acquisition. You can see here uh, the tumor uh, enhancement, but it was not so easy to depict the feeders of this tumor. The reason why we decided to perform a CT arteriography. And uh, uh, for this acquisition, it's very interesting because no need to make the CT gantry moving. You have just to position the CT gantry in the liver area and to tell the patient to, to, to breathe normally and uh, only in one rotation, uh, because of the large spatial coverage, you uh, will uh, cover the whole liver and uh, obtain a very low dose uh, exposition to the patient and a very high quality uh, of uh, images. And you can see the tumor very well, as well as the feeders of the tumor. And after that, my radiographer segmented the liver arteries, it's a very fast process. I will show you exactly how it works after. And after that, uh, this uh, uh, 3D model was sent to the C-arm, and you can see here your 3D road mapping technique, and see the green point here that we selected for optimal positionment of, uh, of the microcatheter. And as you can see, in this case, we activated three functions at the same time, the 3D road mapping, the spot fluoro, and the live zone to limit the dose delivered to the patient could also obviously uh, look at uh, the, the DTS uh, technology uh, to see uh, the skin exposure and to modify the angulation if necessary. This is the final result. You can see the contrast medium trapped between beads uh, in this uh, tumor. Now some clinical cases, but again more to show you the workflow. And first patient, this is an implantation of uh, hepatic arterial catheter for hepatic arterial infusion of chemotherapy. As you know, with this procedure, you have first to catheterize uh, all arteries not uh, feeding the liver, and especially the right gastric artery, which is sometimes difficult to catheterize. And in this case, you can see this large uh, proper hepatic artery, and this very small, probably very small, uh, right gastric one. And uh, maybe uh, we wanted to find an optimal angulation of the CRM to uh, make the catheterization easier. And uh, just to show you the workflow, for, from the angel to the CT, I move laterally the C arm. Then I have just to put the table in, in CT position. And then you can make the CT uh, gantry moving. You can do everything yourself. The CT is moving. You have to move away the lateral protection against radiation. Then to adjust the table eight. And you move the CT gantry until the wished position. And that's all. So much faster, much easier than preparation before convenient CT acquisition. And look at the image quality. And again, the objective was to better visualize the, the origin of the right gastric artery. I want to do that very fast. You see this image, CT arteriography, axial plane. You can, sorry, you can, I'm sorry, I'll go back. Okay. You have just to zoom this image and then to click on the right gastric artery you can see here and to keep the click pressed and all the vessels are segmented very fast. This is the result. And then you have just to find the optimal angulation of, uh, to visualize the origin of this uh, uh, artery and to send it to the C arm. 
And you can see the double angulation here with this 3D road mapping with the right gastric artery that was much easier to catheterize with this uh, optimal angulation. And again, the spot fluoroscopy technique combined with the zoom, live zoom technology. Another case of a patient with HCC uh, for a combined procedure embolization plus radiofrequency ablation. So first we started by a CT scan accusation just for treatment planning. Look at this, this tumor, subcapsular location, a little bit large, 35 millimeters, uh, not well defined, and surprisingly not visible on the US. So for this procedure, first we decided to uh, use again 3D world mapping because it is very, very easy. We use it every day. First, we inject a small amount of lipardol to make this tumor visible under CT. Then, we used uh, the CT flow to introduce three radio frequency ablation needles, and, but uh, using a no touch approach. Uh, you can see these needles, but also the fourth one uh, to uh, make uh, hydro dissection and to protect the stomach. Then we injected small particles to embolize the feeders of the tumor, and we did a blade. And this is the final result with the tumor and wide margins around with seven centimeter ablation zone. Another case, port of embolization, a young woman, 45 years, with liver meds from colorectal cancer, and this, uh, in this uh, patient, a right hemiapatectomy was scheduled, but unfortunately, this, it's, her remnant liver was not uh, sufficient. Look at the volume, 24%. It could seem to be okay, but in my department, we always use a liver function evaluation by mebrofenin scintigraphy and 1.8 person per minute per square meter. Uh, remember, the safe cut of accepted in literature is 2.7. So we had to go from 1.8 to 2.7 in terms of liver function. It means a 50% increase to uh, make this patient resectable without any risk of small force size. So we decided to perform portal vein embolization. Uh, it was very easy in this case. Uh, right uh, access using micropuncture set. Then uh, injection of contrast medium uh, to see the anatomy of the portal trunk and the portal uh, right and left portal vessels. Then we choose to perform a 4D acquisition, so it means that you have to position the CT scan uh, on the array of the liver and to uh, make tube and detectors rotating and use 3D imaging combined with time. And the acquisition is something like that. You can see the result. You inject during the time of acquisition, so the CT gantry is not moving at all because of this very large spatial coverage. And look at the result, 16 seconds acquisition. Very high spatial resolution, the best one, three images per second. It gives 15,000 images. And look at the DLP, it's, in my opinion, very acceptable. And we can optimize this acquisition because probably it's much too long. We can modify the temporal resolution to have the best one at the beginning of injection, but probably we can reduce this uh, uh, temporal resolution at the end of the injection so we can really uh, optimize. But I think that the radiation dose is acceptable. And because of this huge quantity of images, we can choose the best acquisition. And again, my radiographer segmented the port of vessels. Very easy, very good acquisition. And send it to, to the C-arm. You can see the result of the segmentation. And then I started the embolization from the, from the right uh, axis and using only the flow because it's very easy in this case. No need for the sandwich technique. But I was really confident because I had the, the 3D road mapping. And in this case, in addition, we, you, had, you have a very long right portal vein, which is not the case in, uh, in, in all cases. And you can see the left and maybe three or four minutes were necessary to complete uh, the portal vein embolization. Obviously, at the end, we have the CT scan, so we can do a controlled CT. Again, the same acquisition. You position the CT uh, uh, on the liver and just one rotation, and that's all. And this is the result in this patient. I was very surprised because only seven days after, the volume strongly increased, 24 to 32 percent. But more importantly, the function, uh, 1.8 to 3.4, nearly 100 percent increase uh, of liver function after only seven days. Uh, it's just amazing. But this patient has been uh, resected uh, on Monday this week. 
Now a tips procedure, and I would like to start with this the work of my radiographer. They took a past CT scan of this patient to segment uh, both bones, bones of interest, I would say, and also part of vessels. So this is a video accelerated by a factor two, but to show you how it works, relatively fast process, 2.5 minutes, uh, to segment the bones of interest. And then to go to the portal uh, system, this, this, the CT scan is not of very good quality, but that's enough. You have just to click on the portal system. This segmentation is automatic. In this case, uh, some mistakes because some arteries uh, have been recognized as part of vessels. So you have just to click on a vessel that should not be included. And that's all. You have the wall volume, so bone landmarks and portal veins. And then during the same time, we started the procedure, so puncture of the internal jugular vein. You can see that the volume is, is, is already uh, ready. And then uh, the catheterization of the right hepatic vein. And you can use bone landmarks uh, uh, to uh, make a very good registration and to be sure that your portal vessels are located here. And then we puncture the portal system using both US guidance because we always use US guidance for such procedure, but also in this case, fluoroscopic guidance. It probably increases the confidence we have uh, for this procedure. Uh, in my department, we use two stents, cover stent, then bare stent. It's not really interesting. And uh, a balloon dilatation. And look at the final result, the final portography. Uh, you can see that there is a good uh, registration and we have a good result. And this uh, is really helpful for this procedure, considered as complex, especially for young interventional radiologists. Now, a very nice, uh, interesting uh, feature provided by this system, the subtraction imaging. But to have subtraction imaging, obviously, you need two acquisitions, one without contrast, obviously, and one, uh, for example, at the arterial phase. In this case, only four seconds after injection uh, in the celiac trunk. And the system provides you with uh, subtracted imaging like that. So you can see very high contrast in liver vessels, but the image is not so, so, so nice. But you have just to take this acquisition and make, for example, a, a MIP coronal reformation and look at the results. Clearly, there are a huge number of vessels in the liver. Could not imagine so many vessels, only four seconds after acquisition. And very, very good quality. And if we go to the volume rendering technique, very good quality, but maybe too high quality or too many vessels. We cannot imagine using this model for 3D road mapping because of too many vessels. But I think it's time to discuss a little bit about the difference between NGO City and Conbeam City. Because as shown previously, in my opinion, angiocity acquisitions are much, much better, probably much better on all areas as compared to the C arm uh, con beam city. Live for phase four preparation, much easier, much faster, you show it. Uh, field of view, much larger. Coverage, more flexible. Isocentering, very easy. Phase, you can do everything you want including 4D imaging with Conbeam City, you can do only one, maybe two uh, phases. Breathing instruction, less or maybe not important, it's completely different with Conbeam City. Workstation work, less important. Effective dose for the patient, less important. And image quality, again, look at the results provided by the previous images, excellent as compared to Conbeam City. So in my opinion, it's much, much better. Much better. And based on this subtraction imaging, because we have so high quality, we can reduce the number of vessels visualized and have uh, high quality volume running, but also high quality 3D world mapping. Look at this vascular tree. And if you use ventilation technique with small volumes, the 3D road mapping is very, very efficient. This was a case, a new case of, of taste with Lipardo injection. Now the last part for 4D imaging. Again, we use the Aquino 1 technology, the rare detector CT technology. It means that we can cover the full organ 16 centimeters in only one rotation. So in one rotation, you have 3D data, 
if the rotation is maintained, you can have 3D data plus time. So this is true for the imaging. And that's interesting. This is an example outside the liver. But look at this uh, nice image, 2D, 3D image of this hand. And because of, thanks to this technology, you can imagine a uh, functional imaging. You can make this hand moving. You can see the movements. You can see the functional imaging. And with uh, uh, interventional radiology, this is also very interesting. This is a patient with uh, metastatic neuroendocrine tumors in the liver. We had to treat by taste. Look at this result. This is not DSA imaging. This is CT scan imaging, 4D imaging. And this is only the coronal MIP reformation because you have 4D data, so many, many data. You can do everything you want with this data. You can do volume rendering, you can do MIP, you can do s very small slice thickness, every reformation you want, you can get 4D information. And that could change completely our practice. That's very interesting. You have perfusion information included. You have the arteries feeding the tumor, many, many information. And again, in this case, not optimized in terms of uh, dose delivery, but 19 seconds of acquisition, three images per second, 18,000 images. Look at the DLP. It is really acceptable. Another example here, taken from the patient with polar vein embolization we showed previously. Again, this is the same. You can see anything you want with such technology. And again, look, we have, okay, a huge number of images, but we have also acceptable uh, uh, radiation exposure and we can really uh, optimize this, uh, this uh, exposure. Now it's time to conclude. In my opinion, this for this CT technology uh, has an excellent angio system. I was not familiar at all with uh, Toshiba angio system. I was very surprised because it is very flexible, but most important, it is really user friendly. As you could see, in one month only, we are able to do many things and uh, uh, especially many tools I would say intelligent tools for those optimization because you want to use it every day. And this is very important. Second, this is an angio CT system. So you have a high-end CT scan with a wide spatial coverage. And I hope you are convinced that the images are much better and everything, the workflow, everything is much better than the Conbeam CT. And 4D capabilities really are fascinating. We have to work a lot uh, on that in the following weeks. There is a permanent communication between the angio and the CT. So you not only have an angio uh, suite and a CT scan, you have something different combining both imaging modalities. And that's very important. So with this technology, you can perform very complex procedure easily, really. And I think probably this is the last conclusion. I think this is beneficial for the patient because you can practice a very complex procedure. Beneficial for us because it's really funny to use such imaging modalities, but it is also beneficial for the hospital. Thank you very much.